So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today is uh, the second day in a row of emergency meeting. Uh, it's one day after yesterday. Uh, the 14th? Yes. Yeah. Um, and I called a meeting to order. Um, and so the agenda is, I believe, it's left the same as yesterday's. Um, which was a discussion of flood remediation from the Pine Hill Slope and uh, drainage issues and drainage cal canal, uh, drainage pipe clogged, um, and a potential vote on uh, uh, the pipe between 12 River Street and 14 River Street. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, Veronique uh, messaged us or emailed us earlier today with some concerns of hers and wished to have a discussion. But there's also been significant new developments. Um, and um, by somebody that was kind enough to share some, some information on mass dots inner workings and um the belief that basically i'll just you know so so yesterday's meeting ended up with a vote to um authorize the hiring of js ray to unplug the drain tomorrow um and the state coming out tuesday with the camera the fancy new camera truck to ascertain the exact location of the drain pipe um, from the stream behind in between 12 and 14 River Street um, to which is believed by the MassDOT representatives that I've been speaking to in the past few days as they keep coming by and trying to unplug the drain um, that they all believe that it goes directly into the box the drain in front of 14 River Street and they believe that because they see they they believe that they see evidence that the ditch was dug in the straight line that the 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 drain the drainage ditch is in an offset at the end of the stream and if you look at the direction just where you stick up stick up stick in the drain um and it, it goes directly to that drainage basin um and the people from MassDOT think that they see the evidence of the digging process and the laying of the ditch process on the land in that same direction. So, um, and one of the gentlemen that spoke to me, um, who has tried twice to come to, to unplug the ditch, um, is going to be here Tuesday with the crew that does the camera stuff. And, um, and that um, basically, you know, the the one assumption that that I was making and that I believed um, uh, Mike Fabiano had expressed a preference for was that uh, that the drain be unplugged for that truck to work with to, b before they do the camera thing. And what I was told, um, and I, I I did share the information, the identity of the person. Um, that told me this with Veronique, um, but he, he expressed a desire to remain anonymous in a public setting um, for reasons that Veronique can share with you, uh, such as like his employment and things like that. Um, uh, but basically the, the, the camera can be put down uh, at both ends, um, can be placed at both ends and it would have the added bonus of finding out exactly what the nature of the blockage is. Um, and that, um, that in previous situations such as this, exactly with these sort of same fact patterns that, um, you know, a, a ditch that starts, a, you know, a drain that starts in on private property and ends on state property um, or underneath the state road, when it's clogged and the result of the clog is uh, hazard to the motoring public on the state highway, 
the state can, does, has, and will un, uh, unplug it. And that, um, that we shouldn't take no for an answer. We shouldn't take it's complicated for an answer and that we should push really hard and make it happen. Um, and so that at this point, rather than have the town make this expenditure, um, um, I am convinced of the knowledge of the person, people that I was speaking to um, and the inside knowledge of the, 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 what I was told. And I think that the better course of action is when they show up to work on Tuesday, when Mike Fabiano shows up to Tuesday, really, really lobby hard for the state to do this as they have in so many instances in the past. Um, it's their, the ditch is there for their benefit, for their roads benefit. Um, and um, the whole, you know, the, 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 the part, so, I mean, I don't know whether, but, you know, I, I did communicate with um, JS Ray and told them to hold off. So they're not coming. And, um, but the situation as, and I had committed to manning the pump, the, the transfer pump, fueling it every hour all night long tonight again, although, if, if you know me at all, you can see that my faculties are beginning to really fray around the edges right now. And that I can barely string a sentence coherently together, um, even more so than usual, I'm afraid. And um, but, uh, you know, to me, it just it's it, it shouldn't be the town's problem. It's the state's thing. And that this is what they do. And, you know, you know. It's it, the they understand when, when they get the camera to see that it is blocked and that if it's not blocked, you know, the only thing between hazard hazarding the, their the motoring public on their road and is the actions of one homeowner um, who is losing his mind in the process, um, then, you know, they're going to do something about it. They don't really have a choice. Uh, and so, you know, I, I just don't I'm not. I've never been comfortable with the town spending money on anything, um, but um, I'm not comfortable with the town spending money on this either. And even though, you know, um, it, it had the promise of a night's sleep, of a good night's sleep on Monday night, um, which was an alluring thought for me. Um, but, you know, the, the, uh, what, what the, people that I was talking to though you know we're saying is like it's insane to keep doing this with a gas powered transfer pump that needs to be refueled every hour and the the fire department although they have a better re transfer pump um and much you know more powerful it's also gas fueled and it is it's an even smaller tank and theirs needs to be refueled like five minutes earlier than mine does because the one I'm using is my personal one. Um, and the um, and they highly recommend getting an electric transfer pump and just plugging it in and just going to bed. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the cost of those is quite expensive. They're, they're significantly more than a gas or a diesel powered one. And um, but the belief from those in the know is that West County which is where Conway rents a whole lot of equipment from, um, where Ron always rents equipment from, it, um, it, it located in Shelburne Falls. The belief is that they have a rental electric transfer pump. Don't know if it's out already or if it's not. Um, they're, they're supposed to be open tomorrow. I do not have the owner's cell phone number, although I do believe Ron does. Um, but, you know, so, so I'm not able to contact them today or now, but, um, I want an electric trans. I want the rental to be authorized for the electric transfer pump, um, because it's not, it's insane what is being asked like of me to do this. Like it's, in, it's not tenable. And, um, you know, so th this is like separate and aside from Veronique's thoughts on the subject. Um, but, but basically, um, you know, I, I to, to to recommend that we push really hard Tuesday morning for the state to just do this. That other, otherwise, their road is 
you know, we could just sandbag. Honestly, we could, we, we've got a supply. I don't know if you know this, um, the EMD department obtained a supply of 75 sandbags. They're empty, of course. They only give the filled ones to larger population centers. Um, but they did give us a little plastic thing that somebody, one person can hold and it tie, you tie the top of the thing. So we, we could sandbag this stream and just divert it to their road or to the grate, which would be messy and would end up in their road too. Um, and, you know, that is... That's option B, like, uh, you know, but the, 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 you know, create our own stream channel above ground. Um, Which maybe given that MassDOT is coming out to like investigate what's actually literally happening, it's probably like, I mean, I wouldn't want to remediate it <laughs> right now. Yeah. Well, um, so, so, you know, I, I, I don't believe that the, I don't know what the cost of a rental in these things at West, West County, the only time I've ever rented stuff from them. And it was, it was like floor polishing stuff, whatever they rent a whole, they have a whole lot of stuff to rent. They even rent like chef's equipment. Um, they, they've always had like minimum rentals and like deposit requirements and all that. So I don't, um, I do know that, that our highway department has an excellent working relationship with them. And I believe that they get good prices that the residential homeowner would not be able to get. But um, I don't even know if that's true, though. But I just that's my belief. Um, so that's that's sort of the new development. And if you uh, want to confirm with uh, the uh, with, with Veronique later on about the identity of the person making the, the sharing this specific level of knowledge with me and why I'm confident that this is um, a preferable route. It'll make sense to you once you learn the identity of the person. Um, so. Right. So, but it, it, it sounds like in any case, the urgency that we felt was there because MassDOT was coming and we didn't think they could do what they needed to do with the pipe in its current state. That's not, that's not true anymore. So it's not, Apart from your mental health, <laughs> it's not. Which is always a fragile thing to begin with. <laughs> right. Let's be honest. But um, the urgency, the but, urgency isn't there at this point. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, for the repair, yeah, for the, for the, yeah, yeah, the, the 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 urgency, uh, you know that that for, for, that Mass Dot can do what they need to do with it being plugged, and yet yesterday I was under the assumption that they could not do what they need to do unless it was unplugged. Um, so, you know, and that was, that was an assumption based on inferences from a, several conversations with Mark, with uh, Mr. Fabiano. But I did hear from somebody that really knows what they're talking about and said that it's not, that they, they that that'll work just fine with it being plugged. They put the camera in from both ends and that there might be a benefit because they'll tell you the exact nature of the plug, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that, it, you know, for instance, if if it is not if it is not composed of a boulder, if, if all they can see is dirt, silt, silt leaves, twigs, um, a fire hose that, you know, our own pumper truck sprayed into it might be able to unclog clog it. But unless you know what the the, it, the the clog is composed of, if it's a boulder or if it's a rock, you're just making the problem worse if you do that. So, um, do we know how long this pipe is? Is it something they could snake? Yeah, um, they that's what they tried to do, yeah. and um, they believe that the blockage is too much for that ability. Yeah, um, and. But that, you know, that's that is what they try to do. They've been out now three times in the past what 24 hours trying to do it. You know, the the one crew is the first and the third shot. The, so the, let me the, ask a um a question based on um policy on how we're supposed to go about this. Since we're now not having to spend this money tomorrow, which of course is all of our um it's the best outcome, obviously, for all of us. Uh, do we have to rescind that vote, Veronique? I would 
I would do that, yes. And then when you also have the meeting where this is presented after a, a publicly posted meeting, you could reiterate that you rescinded the vote. Okay, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure that we do need to rescind it. I mean, I we could vote to pause the implementation of it as well um, until until further vote of the select board. I think that's probably a better idea is that we do a, a, a temporary pause until we can gather more information. Well, how do we, how do we, I mean, we've already basically authorized that funding. If we just, if we just pause, then that. I, I, so that I, would be, I, um, I would prefer to that would be a motion of reconsideration in the nature of a temporary pause for implementation. Uh, pending further select board vote. Or we rescind and do another vote again if it's necessary. That would be my recommendation. That's more, yeah, I, I would it's feel more cleaner to do it that way, I think. Because you can always come back and vote later. Right. Once you, once you right. have more information. All right, you, you agree with that, Erica? I do, yeah. So um, I'm gonna make a motion that we rescind our vote of yesterday. Um, pending further information from the MassDOT engineers later this week. I'll second, aye, Chris Waldo. Aye, Erica Goldman. And once again, I am recusing myself from deliberations in this matter. So the vote is two to nothing with one recused. I still am gonna come around, uh, um, and now it's Tuesday, you said? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'll I'll come by myself. I want to see this. <laughs> I do too. And my understanding is Mr. Fabiano did reach out to Veronique by um, email and confirm that they're coming out on Tuesday as well. Is that right? I did email um, Mr. Fabiano yesterday after the meeting to ask if I could get an update, and he said that he would have crews out here on Tuesday. He did not happen to mention that he personally would be here. No, he doesn't. He doesn't come right. out here. Yeah, he doesn't so, leave the deck. So the question is, um, would the board wish me to reach out to him on Tuesday morning to get more information? Hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I think it's better than not. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And just so the board is also aware, I'm having a conversation with Mike and Jan and DOR, we had planned this a while back actually, because there were some questions. We just wanted to make sure that everything we're doing with the emergency deficit spending is being done correctly. And they had had some questions. So we're meeting at 1130 on a team's meeting on Tuesday. So right. the, you know, I, 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 you know, and, and I would, and I think I did request of this Ronnie privately that first thing in the morning, she contact Mr. Fabiano and, that, and this is something that we all should be doing to ask him to have the state unplug the drain. Like, and that he has, you know, he made it sound to me in conversation like it was a big thing, but big things for them are pretty easy to deal with, easier. So, so this is just also based on today's conversations that it is a big thing, but it, for them, that ain't nothing. Um, that they can make they can make big things happen fast um and uh you know yeah, so 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 based on the board's direction i will contact mr fabiano first thing tuesday morning and if we have been able to make contact with each other i can report back tuesday night great but you know in the meantime um you know um um requesting that the that we rent a um um Electrical. electric transfer yeah. so that so, can... i'll say two things on that phil one if you need i have a very large generator electric generator if you need it um and i'm looking online and you can even get like a pretty decent electrical transfer pump at at uh harbor freight for 100 bucks so i would assume based on that that the rental should be minimum should be very cheap what's 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 the what's the gallons per minute flow on that 1525 gallons per hour 
per so hour. Let's, let's do by divided by 60 here. 1525 divided oh. by 60 is 25.4. Yeah, that's that's not way too small. No. So the mine mine is 185 gallons per minute, and it's barely keeping, I mean. Is no longer dramatically overflowing its banks, but it's it's pretty much matching the the flow of the stream right now. The fire department is well in excess of two hundred gallons per minute, and that's the that's kind of you know one eighty five and something like that per minute is. Got it. My understanding well, is that those are much bigger. Right. Oh yeah, I see now. Three hundred thirty-one per minute is like more like three hundred fifty dollars. Is there? I mean, maybe this is just a, a useful thing for either the fire department or the highway department to own outright. Is an electric transfer pump with with grid? Right. I have now. Right. It the doesn't. Fire seem... department, the, you know, like I, I have their only fire. To, I mean, I just returned it an hour ago, but I have their their only transfer pump, and they definitely would like another one they've expressed that on multiple occasions um but uh you know i don't i you know they they have a real they're real specific about their equipment they don't like like retail harbor freight they like fire fire certified stuff with all of the ease of use in the middle of the night or when you're when you're you know when the building's on fire and all this stuff um because that's what they use it for and that like they're so everything about theirs is you can do like in a smoke filled room with your, you know, or your with your eyes closed from hooking it up to hooking the inlet, the outlet hoses to starting it. Everything about theirs is like so far superior to mine, which I got from Harbor Freight. And that was like 500 because the hoses, the inlet hose and the outlet hose cost yeah. almost, as much, almost as much as the unit. Well, that's um, what I was going to say. I'm seeing these inlet hoses are only up to two inches and I'm sure that's not enough. Yeah, the so the, the the fire department's is three and a half. Yeah, like that, that just cranks, um, and that's what's saved a bunch of residences from flooding the in all during July and everything. This their, their their ability to leave that running and take their pumper trucks to another residence. Um, I think we can at least find out what the rental cost would be, right, Veronique, through um. Ron? Um, yes, I suppose we could. My, uh, my, I guess my recommendation would be not to authorize anything until we've spoken with DOT. Um, yeah, which is fine. I'm just wondering if we can at least get a quote. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I could ask Ron on Tuesday morning to uh, to see how much it would be. Phil, what's the recommended size so I would know what to ask, Ron? Um, Three and a half inch inlet yeah. valve at a, at least 125 gallon per minute. 185. 185. Yeah. Okay. See, the one of the things that I had heard, I tried to do a little research today for Phil, and one of the things I'd heard is that it's very difficult to find electric pumps that do that quantity. Yeah, I think I'm seeing that online, but they're the experts, right? I mean, I, I, you know, I, 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 di I didn't go that far in my research. I just pulled up that West County had that. It appeared that on their list of online rental inventory, it, they, it was, it was on it. I didn't, it, do, it didn't list its specifications. Um, but the so just just to confirm, three point. Five inlet hose and at least 185 gallons per minute. Is that correct? Yeah, the, I mean, three inch would be fine as well. Three inch is more than is more. I mean, mine's doing the job with two with two inch pipe. But I know the fire department if they're if they want something, it, it's like if if you're getting it for the fire department, we you would probably be best to consult with Chris or with I don't know if Bob Baker's the one that makes those decisions anymore um um Doug Dougie and Chris um 
about uh, but maybe Bob is, I don't know, but you know, the, the, uh, about what's the nature of the machine is that they would want. So, you know, they, they want it rigged so that two people can carry it instead of one person struggling with it with due to its weight, two people can sprint. Um, there's all these things, all these consists so they have like a, an extra metal frame attachments or whatever that they insist on so that there's handles for two people to like run with it. Um, so that's well, that's a, if we if we were to purchase something, I think if we're going to purchase something, I definitely would want the fire department or and or Ron to, you know, actually make that final determination of what like what they need. Um, but I mean, as far as just a rental, I imagine we're just going to be limited to what <laughs> what's available, you know, on a short on, on very short notice. I'm not, I don't know, you know, the, the, the idea of authorizing, waiting till, till you hear from MassDOT, I don't know what the purpose of that is or what you expect to learn from that, but. Um, well, no, I'm, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm saying, I don't know that. that we no, it wasn't you. That, that, that purchase a, you know, like to go out and purchase a pump. I don't think we're in the position to do that right now. No, yeah. I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I have one already and it's suitable for my needs and I don't, you know, I wouldn't purchase one. I just know that, um, you know, the the gas power thing is not sustainable as a method of um, dealing with the flow of this stream. Like my my personal gas powered pump that needs to be fueled one at every hour, twenty four seven, is like at this point, it's like probably endangering my health to some extent. Um, especially when I get behind the wheel and try to drive anywhere or something like that. But the, you know, the, the, I, I mean, I guess this, like, uh, you know, the, the idea though, that you didn't want to authorize any rental, was that what Veronique said until you I hear think, from I think her, tell me if I'm wrong, Veronique, you're still cautious about whether this is town or personal property. Yes, this was my, that, that suggestion of mine was based on the concerns I raised earlier in the email. And I can certainly, as I mentioned, we're speaking with DOR at 1130 on Tuesday, and I can certainly bring up this question just to get some clarity from them about what's authorized. And, you know, I'm, they are not experts in this subject matter. They are not. And, you know, our lawyer is fairly expertise in this subject matter and you have her answer already. So I don't, you know, the idea that you need to hunt around until you find somebody that I, I don't really know. I, I don't understand that particular need to delay a solution to a problem, um, to it, to, and to delay the prevention of, future problem is really what it's all about um as well so like i don't i you know the uh, you know and, and i one of the things that veronique expressed in her email was that she was uncomfortable just going on the word of the members of the fire department and um you know I'm uh, sorry, that's a misrepresentation. All right, well then tell us. I don't have your letter in front of me. That's my recollection. So go tell no, us what, 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 what you said about it. Well, let me call up my email. Hang on a second. <clears throat> While she's doing that, I'm just looking at the electric water pumps that are you know rated at at least that. I'm looking at a 280 gallon per minute, three inch. Every single one of them is at least 230 volt three phase. Oh man, yeah, it's so nice. that's it's not, nice. it can't yeah. do that unless you unplug your dryer. If you have a dryer hookup, no, I do have a dryer hookup, however, that when my electrician restored power the last time, there wasn't room in the electrical panel that he got for me, so um, that one got left out. Yeah, so I don't think that's going to be viable for your situation. I don't see anything that's at under 230 volt. There's some two phases, but most are three phase. And even then, you still need a 120 volt. And there's doesn't appear to exist. 
much. In looking at my email, I do not mention the um, fire department at all, except to say that we could call Ron and Bob in to discuss their knowledge about the work done in the area. When Mass DOT is here doing their work on Tuesday. Either that, or if the board wished to call them in to get some historical background from both of them about work so that was done. Veronique, I think it's kind of a moot point. If you could just ask when, uh, with the quote, what the voltage oh. is, because everything I'm seeing is at okay. the lowest 208 three phase, but most everything's 230 volt three phase. So okay. Phil can't do anything unless it's 120. Right. So it might be a moot point. It probably doesn't exist is what I'm seeing. Something yeah. with that much horsepower pumping that much is probably going to take a lot of volts. Yeah. Okay. I will do that. And then if it does come to be true, then we can deliberate some more, I think, if you all agree with that. If it's possible to actually rent. Correct. An electric. Yeah. Well, I mean, then we're back to square one, because if the state can't commit to doing this immediately, the solution can't be homeowner, bail the town out, um, and just do this on your own one gallon, you know, every hour, the rest of your life until the cavalry arrives. Like, Yeah, I think we can do the same thing we've done the last couple of days. It's just if we need to pull an emergency meeting together, if the state is is, is saying they can't help. But they may, you know, put cameras down there on Tuesday and figure out that, I don't know, they send a whatever, you know, a fire hose, <laughs> like you said. I mean, there may be there may be another solution that we don't know about until they come and investigate. Yeah. So you're already talking about a commitment like I need I need manpower to, like, give me a night off. I'm serious. Like, it's not I can't do this. I need someone that can, like, show up every hour for like five, six hours and just add gas at the top and keep it running. Like, and it's. I assume it's probably dangerous to have like a five gallon gas tank with the hose going down into it. I would do that if there's a way to meter the flow. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem is metering the flow. But I mean, like they're, what makes what makes it hazardous is if it's snowing or raining, and then that's not good for the fuel that's going in, unless that's protected. I don't know. They, I just know that the setup now it's up on cinder blocks to keep it dry, it, you know, and it's um, it requires physically going out there with a fuel can, fueling it up, coming back inside the house, setting your phone alarm, getting back up in fifty five minutes going back out there and if you wait till if you, and if you do that if you go five minutes over maybe seven or eight minutes over it shuts off it's it's, it's done and, and a lot of that too is because the police and fire chief they wanted that they, they wanted to attach the old fire hoses which are which were two inch that they still have um that go all the way down to the drain and i don't know if anybody drove by and saw the red hose going all the way down into the raised drain on 116 um whereas before i was just my own hose just is 20 feet long and it went to the edge of my driveway and then from there onto the road um and down into the bridge over 116 the the culverts the the drainage inlets right there but that made the whole that, cer that certainly made it more dangerous in icing conditions um but the result of instead of using a 20 foot outlet pipe using a hundred foot outlet hose the result is the engine has to work a lot harder so i went from having to fuel it every two hours to having to fuel it every hour um which very good for public safety very bad for build mental health yeah i don't so know what exactly, to say there <laughs> what exactly happens to the road if you if you if you let this pump go if you sleep for the night your basement fills up right yeah the but me and my neighbor's basement fills up um and um and that's a that's a whole nother ordeal because you know my 
my pump was uh, is like a last case flood emergency pump. I got it after the July floods um, on the recommendation of the fire department so that I would hopefully not need their intervention anymore. And it has, if I wasn't pumping the stream, I wouldn't have needed their transfer pump <laughs> to use in my basement. Um, but they wanted to give it away to someone else too. So, you know, I had to part with it and then get it back, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's, I don't even know what to say other than if the state won't be fixing this on Tuesday, I don't think, I mean, maybe, but um, doesn't sound like they're, you know, I don't, I, it doesn't sound like they have that piece of equipment. They They did confirm with me that that equipment is in the garage that their vacuum truck that is from 1996 and it's a piece of junk, but that when they get, when they get it fixed, it works until it breaks again. Um, and that, um, that, that, that even though Northampton has a brand new one and it's sitting in their yard, that the two, the districts are not permitted to speak to each other for reasons that are mysterious to everybody involved. But, um, Maybe our state representative could help with that. Maybe. I don't know. I would ask the Verani call um, Natalie Blaze and ask her if she can help with that. Get get District Two to be to part with to 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 loan out their vacuum truck to District One and get it up here on Tuesday. That'd be great. It's close by. It's in their yard. You can on the. If you drive down the back road to Walmart, you can see it sitting right there. It looks beautiful. Fresh paint, new, um, sitting there. It's, it's mind boggling. Instead, it's they're strange. Um, oh, so yeah, we're Berkshire District. Yeah, because we're District 1 out of Lenox, of course. District two is Northampton and Deerfield. Why? Of course, we can't be part of that. Hmm. Um. But you know, like so, in within the next, I mean, so, I mean, I gotta just suck it up and do what I got to do for the next couple of days. Um, and we'll talk about it Tuesday night. By then, that will also be a third additional day, which will make a solid week of doing this. And I don't, I, I don't know. I, I need help. Well, I've always needed help, but I need help in this particular instance with commitment to man the pump um, at certain times because this is not good. Um, and I don't, I don't know. We can't like direct firefighters to do it, can we? That wouldn't be very nice. But man, it ain't very nice directing me to do it either. So, um, yeah. I know it doesn't help. I just don't understand why the tank is so small. Yeah. I'm trying to see if there's a automatic fuel transfer system oh what's this i'm gonna do some research all right because if anything if there is like a what it looks like a device here i mean i've got a five gallon tank i don't need that would at least give you five hours well no six, it's six really I have a five gallon tank and two of the neighbors most affected have purchased um, and filled up five gallon tanks in the past day um, to use. So I could at least that cuts down the trip, the necessary trips too. Yeah. Let me do some more research on this because this looks like it actually might work and it's only $56. So I'll do some research tonight and, uh, if it works, I'll I'll get one for you, Phil. All right. I mean, if you want to take 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 a look, come, drive out, come out and take a look at exactly the setup and what's, you know, how it could possibly work to yeah. make sure 
the order is. It's it's running right now. Okay. It's right at the side of the house. Keeps you from stepping into the the stream, which otherwise blends in perfectly with the color of the land. And you, you, it's it's a whole nother scary thing. You don't want to take too many steps be, beyond the transfer pump because that next step might be four feet deep into a stream. So, Got it. All right. Well, I'll let you all know by morning what I find on this. If I think it works, I'll get it tonight. All right. So, I mean, there, so there, there was d d originally the reason that this meeting was called to was to address Veronique's multiple concerns. Um, it, you know, and I always like in situations like this, for, for any, any time there's concerns like this to just air them out and put them in public and just have it out. But um, I don't know. It's up to you too. I don't. I don't know whether it's necessary right now, but some of those issues seem like they might rear their head again, and um, some of the stuff I really disagree with. But I think the board has actually addressed tonight most of the concerns that I had, um, because if you know you're going to be waiting for DOT to give some information. Um, that was one of my biggest concerns. And the other was the financial, and I'm speaking with DOR on Tuesday. So if the board wishes, I could bring up this issue with them. I don't want to do it unless you all say you want me to, because we were just going to speak generally about our deficit spending and making sure we were all driving in the right lane. Yeah, so the, the one thing, you know, the, the agenda for, for these past couple of days has talked about flood remediation on Pine Hill Road. The um, the FERCOG report talked about the need for additional stormwater management by the town on on the four roads that constitute the Pine Hill Slope. Um, the Upper Baptist Hill Road, Pine Hill Road, Baptist Hill Road, and Emerson Hollow Road. Um, and... The borrowing article specifically mentioned engineering. Um, we have never, as a board, directed Veronique to begin looking into the engineering of it. I, I personally, you know, I don't really think that it needs to be engineered. I think it just needs a, a highway director that's willing to just read the report and implement it. I don't understand, you know. I don't under, you know, he knows gravity. He knows how water moves, fix what's broken. That was identified in that report as what's broken. You implemented suggestions in that report. And I don't, you know, but. Um, well, so, to I mean, be clear, we're I, talking about two different things because the we, FERC we, representatives made clear in their report that they were not engineers. Right. So because that was a liability thing and of course they can't they can't say that follow it because they can't be they can't put themselves in the position of being sued if we follow their advice since engineers have professional malpractice insurance for that reason um so but you know i i don't i don't know whether i, I do know ron did read that report and I, that was now i don't know four months ago and nothing's ever been in well what he did implement made things worse. So um, significantly worse for every landowner, but one for her, it got better for them, that couple, it got better. Everyone else is paying the price for that because that was not, a, that was not what the plan by FERCOG outlined at all. It was quite contrary to that, you know, having all that water on Upper Baptist Hill Road go into that grate on the north side and then discharging to that um, wetland between Lori Block and Donna Gilman was... Well, uh, what, was, it, was is, That was just an insane idea. And it's not... that That is the loci and, you know, one of the, the major reasons why we're in this predicament right now. That was Ron, just... As you know, Ron is on the agenda for Tuesday night to discuss all these things. Yeah. 
but you know, I, I, I hesitate bringing anything like this. You know, I, I don't expect to have any type of resolution. I, I know the man and, and you know, um, I don't, uh, you know, I, I, I remember what happened when we just tried to implement the shade tree con con uh, commission and how many different um, meetings with the lawyer he had to have to be told the same thing over and over and over again. And even even now, he still wants a second opinion and a third opinion and a fourth opinion. Um, and it's just that's it's a hard man. But in those in these regards and to to ask him to do something different, is to ask him to admit to a mistake. Nobody likes to do that. But, you know, that and that, and that is why I, I, one of the things I wanted to suggest is to spend the next couple of days for Erica and Chris, just talk to some of the firefighters. Actually, the whole fire department has been here. And the reason why I say talk to that is because during the height of the storms, they were the ones trying to figure out why the water amount especially these past couple of times when the water, the, the volume of water was just a couple inches and, you know, or more, a little bit more, but nothing like the eight inches and 20 minutes of July, but you know, why it was so insane, why the stream was so insane. Um, and they walked up, the, they followed the water and walked up the hill in their, you know, it's not, and, and I guess Bryanton put this into writing. It's what she told me, you know, my recollection of a conversation that, you know, th that uh, I believe that the fire department isn't necessarily stormwater management experts um, or, you know, but whatever, but they are fact witnesses about where all the water was coming from. And, um, you know, they're like all of it <laughs> as near as they could tell that was coming down the hill, you know, in was coming from, that, oh, the, you know, what Ron had just cleared out and cleaned out and fixed that one storm grate storm basin that started, you know, that's between Gilman and Lori Block and um, where all of that water now coming down Upper Baptist Hill Road and also Pine Hill Road in that whole slope um, until you get to Pine Hill Road. Um, all of that water now goes directly to that grate directly underneath the road to that wetlands, directly to the stream here. The, the, you know, the whole purpose of stormwater management is to get is to move the water to a place that can handle it. The only ability for any of that water to get to the basins under 116, which can, which can handle it and can move the water, is through that small stream behind these three houses here on River Street, and that terminates in the corner of a property, a property that I that I live in, um, and and own, and the the idea that that is a, a reasonable thing to do is I, I don't understand how you can think like that, and just I, I don't understand how he would do that. Like the report says, you keep that water. The the Furcon report says you keep that water moving until it gets to the triangle, the town owned triangle in front of. George Forsiers, you fix that, and that is the major problem that has not been fixed. Ron knows about that, has been talking about fixing that for years, um, has not fixed it, and um, and that moves water to behind Forsiers' house and to Emerson Hollow, which goes, which flows to South River, and that is where the water needs to be moved to. And instead, nothing's getting done. Um, and so all, it's not only all of the water from Pine Hill Slope that goes into Upper Baptist Hill Road. It's also all of the water that comes down Pine Hill Road, which is a crazy amount of water. And it's meant to terminate in that triangle. And instead, because it's flooded over, it goes straight over that triangle, also into that same wetland between Gilman and and um, and uh, between Gilmore and uh, you know, Donnie, Donnie Gilmore and the um, and Lori Block. And it's like it's it's whacked. This whole thing is whacked. And it's the town roads that are not moving the water where it needs to be moved. And one of the things that always like has bought, you know, we've we've heard Ron talk about what he thinks his responsibility is when it comes to moving water. And he has stated repeatedly that he thinks his responsibility is 
to get the water from one side of the road to another. And where it goes after that is not his concern. And I'm like, yeah, your actions demonstrate that. And like, um, and the idea that the town would consciously act in a way that would just transfer their problem to a private landowner is just boggles my mind. And the fact that I'm the private landowner just boggles my mind even more. Like, I don't even know what to say. Well, so, I mean, that's that's almost like a separate issue, though, because that's not I mean, that's like a that's that's the big picture issue. And in that respect, he's the boss of the highway department. He reports to the select board. So if that's something that we determine is an absolute priority based upon whatever information that we can get independently from MassDOT and conversations that we have with the fire department, I mean, we can we can make that a priority and say this is something that you have to do, Ron. Right? I mean, that's <laughs> he reports to the select board. He works for us. I mean, in theory, we we've, we've passed two policies addressing you know him during this past year since the July storm. Both of them have been ignored. Um, so I, in theory, we, he works for us. In practice, we do not have. Um, our message is not getting through and our policies are not getting through or complied with. And um, yeah, in theory, he works for us. In practice, he does what he wants. Well, he's and he's going to be at our meeting on Tuesday night, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when when you know when you walk the stream when you walk the water flow yourself from when when I do and when you talk to the fire department that whose individual members and and I'm not talking about people with known or perceived grudges I'm talking about like the frontline people that are just trying to solve problems um, and who everybody knows and totally respects um, you know when they're like yeah this is the town's responsibility they're causing this you know it. I just went up and saw it happening. Like they're fact witnesses. Like that's that's there's this is this is the cause of this situation. It is the town's thing. Like there there are other contributing factors, but without the town's major overwhelming contribution, the drain wouldn't be plugged. This would not be happening. I'd be sleeping. I'd be sounding like a normal person instead of a half crazy lunatic. Um, and, you know, this is just totally not acceptable. And we're talking now for sure. Tuesday night's meeting. I'm going to be even in a worse frame of mind now. I mean, I'm already really trying hard to control the things I say. I mean, I'm like losing the battle. Um, but like, uh, I don't I have no idea what shape I'll be in on Tuesday night. It doesn't sound promising, though. Um, oh dear um but yeah may i make a comment yes of course um so i did want to point out that in the FERCOG report the first recommendation was to have the dye test and i did make that request months ago right as soon as the report came out and we haven't heard back that's something we could speak with mr fabiano about right and but just in general when there's something like that, that is a matter of some urgency for a number of residents, not just me, but, you know, and, and you also, you mentioned that at the, at, at town meeting, at the special town meeting, you've written about that in the Conway Current. When, when it is a matter of some urgency and importance, the idea that you would call and not get a call back and that that would drop off your radar screen, like, it has not dropped off my radar, Phil. I do have emails and, you know, there's only so much that one can do if you don't get an answer. But I would suggest that we make clear on Tuesday that we would like this to be at the top of our priority if the board so directs me to do so. Do so. Please, please, pretty please, with sugar on top. And Is that chair. a direction of the board? Well, there's a whole lot of first. You 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 were like first, you know, as most important. There's a whole lot of like equally first and most important. The die test, yes. Um, the 
the uh, um, Fabiano, uh, uh, um, un, you know, get moving higher, unclog the drain yourself. Um, yes. Uh, what else was there? Those were like two really important. Oh, and um, hire, uh, get, get engineer, get engineer. The, it ultimately, the this is all just a symptom of the whole, the whole need to do stormwater management on those four roads, like for real. And we just, if if we have to start with engineering then start with engineering. The, the report did recommend that, you are correct. So like, to me, those are like three equally, no, actually unclogging the drain is the most important because I'm gonna die if we don't do that. Like, <laughs> um, but uh, unclogging the drain, number one, die test, number two, engineer, number three, but all of them very close to number one in terms of importance. Okay, I'm simply asking that the board is telling me this as a board, that this is my directive. I'll leave it to them to speak for themselves. I think we can obviously add it to the agenda. No, this, this is talking about Veronique's work for, for Tuesday morning. We're not saying like, right? I mean, just talk. Okay. No, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I, in the same way that it, yeah, obviously, I think this is a priority. <laughs> um, okay, so when I speak with, sorry. Are you looking for like a, like a formal vote? A formal, I mean, do you want it us to- It doesn't have to be a formal vote. I just wanted to hear from every member. Mm -hmm. Because it is it is okay to talk about this now, Chris. The, the the agenda did say, you know, flood remediation for Pine Hill Slope. That's what we're talking about. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm totally fine with it. Like you said, like Eric was saying, I, I think it's obviously it, that's why we're having these meetings. Perfect. So when I speak with Mr. Fabiano, I will definitely mention those three items and and see what happens. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, um, I don't know. I don't know. I think that's it. Who's in focus? Yeah. We all right. So, um, I guess we're adjourning till Tuesday, and I'm just gonna do what I do, keep, I've been doing. And um, Chris, your idea of fuel thing would, would really make, that's, I hadn't really thought of that, but if there is such a device and that can be made to appear and that could function as advertised, like that would solve a lot of problems. Yeah, I'll definitely look into it. That might be a question also that Bob, Bob Baker could answer quickly. I would assume he's got, had, has some, history of doing something like that yeah i don't know but if you're gonna get a hold of him um better be before like 6 30 or 7 because they go to bed early because they're up really early all the time yeah okay so and i have a cell phone if you don't have it so. oh i have it thanks um but yeah that would be that would be super cool like that would that would obviate the need actually i mean the electric thing was only good because i could sleep but if i have that i could sleep too and fifty dollars yeah. uh, fifty dollars or sixty dollars is really better than um three hundred dollars i mean still means fifty dollars a day in fuel but um yeah yeah I haven't talked about reimbursement for that too but um i'm gonna be i'm gonna be at some point this, this is adding up crazy uh I thought a couple days, all right, who cares? But man, like day after day after day, I want to ownership interest in a gas station at this point. But um, all right. So um till Tuesday. Unless anybody's got better ideas.
And what they're coming out right at nine? Do we know or eight? How early are they going to be here? Yeah, it's just he said Tuesday morning, but um, I believe his work day is from eight to four. So uh, if they drive from Lenox, then it's, you know, they leave at eight, they get here in and out. Well, no, they leave at eight, they stop at Cummington Creamery and bagel and coffee and get here and they get. Um, all right. All right. Was that a motion to adjourn? I Bronny, think just did it. I Bronny, I'll second. <laughs> what? All right. All right. Sure. All right. You're great. All right. Um, see you Tuesday. Yay. Sorry. Right.